Okay, so everybody's getting excited about program evaluation and they want to make sure that they're demonstrating impact. Great, I love it. It's why I'm here, right? But ah, this is making everybody want to do surveys and everybody wants to develop a survey. There's so many surveys out there and sadly, there's so many bad surveys out there. So what I wanna do today is talk to you about how we can make survey development really easy and we're not gonna get into the nitty gritty of like all, how to actually develop the questions, but we need to go even take a step back further and just talk about some survey basics before you even write your survey so that you can make sure that you are collecting the right data and that you are going to utilize it. All right, let's talk about it. Welcome to episode 16 of the Harvesting Results Show, where I help you serve others by giving you tools, resources, and advice so that you can nurture those roots to harvest the fruits of all of your hard work and dedication to your unique cause. I'm Rebecca Britt, your host, and today we are talking about survey basics. Okay, you want to create a survey, right? But you don't know exactly how to do that. And we all think we know how to make a survey because we've all taken a survey and we all know, oh, okay, I'd like to ask this question. I'd like to ask that question. But there actually is a science and you need to maximize your surveys if you are going to use them because people are sick of taking surveys and people are especially sick of taking surveys when they don't know how they're being used. So if you haven't already grabbed my free master's class of the top three mistakes that nonprofit startups make, Head on over to Cthulhu.com slash startup. That's my gift to you. You can grab that for free today. All right, so let's jump right into it. Survey basics. So what am I going to tell you? What do I always tell you? The first step in creating a survey is stepping back. What is your purpose? What is your goal? You want to define the goal of the survey, okay? The, the questions you're going to ask yourself are, what are your research questions? What are you trying to figure out? So we're trying to determine the efficacy of our programs. We're trying to determine if people like volunteering here. We're trying to determine how we can make the volunteer experience the best experience. We're trying to determine how we can make our programs and services more useful. We're trying to determine the success of our support programs, whatever it is, Define your research questions, okay? And figure out, before you even start figuring out your survey, how are you going to use the data? How are you going to use the data that you collect? So the reason I say this is because you start writing your survey and you go, you know, it would be nice to know. It would be good to know this question. I wonder if we ask about, you know, uh, the flags outside on the building, if they like those and if they... Are you going to take the flags down if they say they didn't like those? Okay, if you're not going to use the data that you get, then don't ask the question. Okay, so only ask questions that you want to know the answer to. And if you define your research questions, then you're going to move on to point two, which point two is write as few questions as possible to answer your overall research question. So if you want to know if your products and services are useful, then you might ask questions about how they felt about your services. You might ask questions about how useful on a scale of one to 10. You might ask an open-ended question. How could our services be more useful? What was the best thing? What was the worst thing, okay, about the services so that you can get some quantitative. You want to ask some questions like a sliding scale. Overall, how satisfied were you? Overall, how useful? so that you can get a nice percentage or a quantifiable number. And you also want to ask some open-ended questions. What more do we need to know? How could we get this better? What was your favorite part? That's a good place to pull quotes from. If people say there was a favorite part, they can, you can pull quotes from that um, for some qualitative data that you can share out. Okay, so you're going to write the least amount, right? So we're not asking, like you might say, how overall were you impressed by your teacher? Overall, how much did you like the facility? If you are not going to change how the facility is, or you don't have enough data to change how this facility is, say everybody says that the facility sucks. They don't like this facility. What do you do with that? 
Okay, I guess we need to make the facility nicer. So you go go into your head about how the facility could be nicer. Maybe you put out flyers and you put a coat of paint on, but that isn't at all what they wanted. Maybe they needed, you know, handicap accessibility or something else about the facility. So you haven't even figured out what it was about the facility that was bad. And now you don't really have enough information to make any changes. And then you, you need to do a follow-up survey. No, you don't want to do that. So if you're not planning and you don't have budget to change your facility, don't ask questions about the facility. Okay. And if you do want to change your facility, you want to know what the overall environment was, then ask specifics. What is it about the overall facility that needs improvement? Okay. And leave an open ended so that you can collect that data. But even when you're asking like, uh, how was the overall facility rated on a scale? You don't know what that means. That, I mean, to the respondent, that could mean that the parking lot wasn't good. It could mean that the entryway wasn't good. It could mean a whole bunch of things that the grass wasn't mowed. Okay. So you want to get really specific so that if you learned that it was a bad answer or a good answer on any question that you would be able to make change because of it. If you can't utilize the data based on a question, you need to change the question, either make it more specific or give them more options to choose from or give them an open-ended answer so that they can write in exactly what they mean. But you still want to like so many times people will do volunteer surveys to just see how their volunteers like, you know, the, the organization or like their experience there. And they'll ask so many questions about how did you hear about us? Okay. It's nice to know how people are hearing about us. But how do you, uh, what are you doing with that data? If they are just going to, you know, say uh, Facebook and the website, Google, heard it from a friend and like in five years you've been collecting that data, but you haven't done anything with it. You haven't done more things on Facebook because more people come to you on Facebook. You haven't done, then do they need to go through the hassle of answering those questions? Okay. So make sure that the questions you're asking, you're actually going to use and then you want the least amount. So. Again, I like the overall rating. How has your volunteer experience been? What's the best thing open-ended? What can we do to improve? Three question survey real quick. Um, but it allows you to collect all the information, right? So if they're saying it's a three on satisfaction scale out of five, then they probably have some things that you can improve on and they'll probably tell you what they really like. Um, so you want to keep doing the things that they really like and you want to change maybe the things that they say are not good. You want to keep it short because as much as you want a whole bunch of data, one, you probably aren't going to use all that data and two, people get tired. P their survey fatigue is a real thing. People don't want to fill it out. But if you can actually, when you're sending the survey out, say, take a three question survey to help us improve, then they know that it's only three questions. Take a three minute survey, take a five minute survey um, to help us improve. So. When I know it's only three questions, I'm like, okay, I can do this. When I have to flip through all the pages or scroll down to see how many questions first, now I'm already out. I'm like, eh, I'm not going to do this. Okay. And now you don't even get the answers of all your volunteers. You probably only get the answers from people who are super committed anyway. So yes, you have a 25 question survey and you get three of them back and you get great results. Well, that's because the three people that love you and are dedicated to you and are willing to fill out a 25 question survey are the ones that responded. Okay. But if you really want to get everybody's feedback, ask them and tell them it's only going to be a little bit of information. Another thing you can do is make sure if people actually do come to your facility or they go to your, any of your events, even if they're online, you can say before you do this event, we have this survey that's going on or before you do your volunteer session at our facility, I'd lo love you to fill out this survey, give them an opportunity to do it at your facility on your computers or whatever, so that they are using their volunteer time to give you the feedback. And it's not something you're relying on them to do outside uh, volunteer sessions. Okay. Okay. So now you have the least amount of questions, right? Possible to answer your research questions, the reason why you're doing the survey. And now this is the most important part. And again, like I said, we can go into in another episode, I can do the nitty gritty of like, 
Likert scale, um, satisfaction rating scales, open-ended, how you write them so that they're, they get the best data um, and so that they're not confusing to the respondents. We can go through how you pre-test surveys so that you make sure that you are getting the answers that you intended to get when you wrote them. Because a lot of times you think you know what you mean, but your respondents actually don't really know what that means. So they answer in a way that isn't the way that you intended. So we can go into all that nitty gritty on another survey deep dive. But just for the basics, one of the basic things you need to do, which most people don't do, is determine how you are going to share your data with the respondents prior to even writing it. So how many surveys have you filled out? Lots. We have all filled out lots of surveys. I'd love to see the person that has escaped surveys. How many times have you been given feedback or data that says, thank you so much for filling out this survey. This is what we did with your responses. This is what we found, and this is how we're gonna use the data. Never, right? I mean, I can't think of a time that I've ever filled out a survey, hospital satisfaction, volunteerism, that I have ever gotten a report back that says, remember that survey you filled out? This is what we found. This is what other people said. And this is how we're going to change because of it. Okay. So if they get a report back from you saying how you're actually going to use the data and what the findings were from the original survey, they are one much more apt to like your organization because they understand like, oh yeah, I filled out a survey for them and look, they're using the data. They're responsive to my needs. And two, they are much more apt to fill out another survey if you send one out because they didn't just waste their time. Now you're telling them how you're using the data. So that is super cool. You want to show them how you use the data. So you're sending this out and you say, remember that survey that you sent out? Well, we found that on a scale of one to five, we got a 4.5% rating. 4.5 star rating on our volunteerism. So thank you so much for giving us that data. We love to hear that you guys are having a great time. Some of the things you guys said you loved were and do the top three bullet points. You loved interacting with the community. You loved the shirts that we gave you and you loved interacting with the population that you serve. Okay. And some of the things you said that we could improve was having a more regular time slot uh, to sign up for slots online. Or you said that you would like to get together with other volunteers. Well, we heard you loud and clear. We are going to now set up a sign up genius online. So now you can sign up for your volunteer slots well in advance and you can see when other people have signed up and you can see what's available. And we are doing a mentor movie and mingle night and a first one is going to be in a month from now. Okay, so they're like, wow, they heard me. How many people like to be heard? How invested do you think people are going to be in your mission if when you give feedback, you're responsive to it? And you go, sure, we can do that, that's easy. And then another thing that you might find is people don't know what they want. So a lot of times people say, we would really love an opportunity to connect with other volunteers, and then you set up a mentor or a volunteer movie night or a mingle night. Nobody shows up because nobody wanted to do something outside of their normal volunteering time. Okay, so then you ask more feedback. You're like, hey guys, you know, send out an email. Hey guys, we did this because you said you wanted more time to connect, but how can we make it you know, easy and approachable for you to be able to connect with people because the movie night obviously wasn't, wasn't a hit. Or maybe it was just like, oh, we really did wanna do a movie night uh, but that one date didn't work for us. So please do it again. Try again in July or whatever. Just continue the conversation. I hear a lot of executive directors say, yeah, well, we tried that and it didn't work, but they didn't continue the conversation. They didn't send out an email and say, remember, we did the survey. You guys said you wanted this. This was our response to that. Maybe it wasn't the right response. How would you like to connect further? You can always continue to ask for feedback, ask for the Keep the conversation going. That's how you deal with relationships. That is how you build relationships. You keep the conversation going. You stay in curiosity, right? So use the data. Don't just be like, okay, we did our annual volunteer survey. Check. Yep. It looks like we've got a 4.7 
uh, star review on volunteering here. So we're going to put that on the website and pat ourselves on the back, but we're not going to do anything to tell the volunteers how we're going to change. We're not going to be responsive. We're not going to give them that feedback. Okay. Anytime you can hear someone and respond to their needs, do it. Do it. They're going to love you for it. They're going to feel like they belong. They're going to feel like they have a voice. And if they don't feel like they have a voice or that they're being heard, the next survey they go, that goes out, they will not fill out or they will fill out. Yep, 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 yep. You know, just real quick, no open-ended, no data. Why would they give you stuff if you're not going to use it? Or if why would they give you stuff if you're not going to respond or they don't know how you use it? Maybe you do use it. Maybe you use it and you try things and they don't even know that that was a result of the survey. So tell them, tell them. And there, there's more content, more relation building content for you. Okay. So define, we're going to recap, define your overall purpose. What are you trying to achieve by sending out this survey? What are your research questions? Okay. Then you are going to figure out the fewest amount of questions you could possibly ask to answer those research questions. Those few questions, those are the ones you're going to develop. All right. Make sure that there is at least one quantitative question where they have to actually, you know, choose an answer. And then you can have one or two qualitative questions that are open-ended asking them to give more open-ended feedback so that they, you're getting the true nature of what they're trying to tell you. And finally, make sure you make a plan to share data with respondents and you actually share that data back with them. How did you use it? What was the data? What did you find? And how are you responding to it? Okay. I hope that that helps you at least step back before you're writing your survey, get, figure out what you're trying to get from these people. Why are you doing a survey and what are you going to do with the survey? Okay. Got to figure that out. All right. I hope that you go grab the free master's class at katulo.com slash startup. You can figure out the top three mistakes that nonprofit startups make. I'd love to see you over there. Go ahead and drop in the comments, the purpose of your survey, like the latest survey that you're doing or a survey that you want to do, drop in your purpose statement so that we can check it out. Other people can see what your purpose statement is for the next survey that you're trying to do. What's your research question. And I can also give you some feedback on that. So I would love to see it. I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for your service to this world.